Hi everyone, welcome to this short demonstration video. My name is Jeremy Van Dorn and I've brought along Richard Garshagen and Richard has brought along a big wreck. So Richard, can you explain a little bit about what's in the wreck? Yes, Jeremy, absolutely. Uh, what I actually have here is a, a whole bunch of servers with me. Um, I got uh, lots of servers. I actually have a storage area network together. Uh, and across all these servers, we actually run the VMware Infrastructure 3 product suite. Okay, so VMware Infrastructure 3, that sounds impressive. Can you explain a little bit of how I can use it? Yes, so VMware Infrastructure 3 is really designed to run production server environments. So it really has a lot of functionality built in for high availability, disaster recovery, and really making sure that you can run optimum your production server environments, uh, and of course has the benefit of consolidation. So in my case here, I'm running a lot of virtual machines on just a few physical servers. Okay, so you're running a lot of virtual machines and just these couple of physical servers. Can you show this to me? Yes, absolutely what I can do. What I can actually do here is I can log into my VMware Virtual Center Infrastructure Client. This is a Windows 32-bit piece of software that I actually have installed on my PC here. And let me log in here as actually as uh, the administrator uh, and with my password. And what you actually will get to see here is actually an overview of all my physical hosts and all my virtual machines. And one of the things that you actually will notice is that you can see here that actually my virtual machines are not tied to my physical hosts. Okay, so we're running all these different virtual machines, but can they also run different operating systems? Yes, yeah, so actually, actually you can run all kinds of different operating systems actually on our environment here. Uh, I mean, let me actually show you. I actually have here a few virtual machines. Uh, as you can see here, I actually have a, on my da database servers, I have a, a Solaris virtual machine running. And so let me actually click here on, on remote console. And here you go. You can actually see that I have a, a up and running Solaris virtual machine running as my database server. Um, I also have here a, a terminal server here. And uh, let me see, remote console. Uh, this is actually a, a Windows 2003 terminal server that I'm running. So I can really run any kind of operating system as long as it's an x86 operating system across all my virtual machines on just these few physical servers. Okay, so this looks really nice, but say I have a new project and for instance I need a new web server. Would you be able to provision a new web server for me? That's actually very easy. I can actually very easily create a new virtual machine for you. Uh, let me actually show you an example. I mean, you say you want a web server. I actually can go here to my list of libraries of templates and I actually can just create a new virtual machine for you straight on the fly. So I actually have here already a pre-made template of a web server, and I can just say here, uh, create new uh, virtual machine from this template, and I'll make a new web server. So I'll call it, uh, uh, I mean, Jeremy's uh, web server, um, and I'll make sure it gets stored in the right resource pool, I'll make sure it's stored in the right uh, storage environment, um, I'll make sure that all the other settings are properly configured, um, and one of the things I have to do uh, is I have to make sure it is, of course, properly customized as well for, for your needs. So uh, I'll select a customization template that I actually have here for web servers, and I'll, I'll, I'll fill in it as, uh, I mean, Jeremy Jer Web 01. There we go. Um, and actually what it will now do is actually we'll start creating this web server for you straight on the fly. Okay, so I can see this task running, but can you explain what happens underneath? Yeah, so underneath, actually, what we're doing here is that we're using the benefits of a virtual machine. So one of the key benefits of a virtual machine is actually is that a virtual machine is nothing more than just a file instead of actually a physical piece of metal. So by being just encapsulated in a file, if I need a new one, I can actually just copy this file over and I'll get a, a new virtual machine. Another benefit of a virtual machine is, is that it is completely hardware independent. That means that I can set one virtual machine aside and I can deploy that new virtual machine from that file to any other physical server that I buy independently if that's the same box or a different box of a different brand or a different model it does not matter because a virtual machine is always the same and it, I can run it on any of my physical servers. Okay, so I can see this virtual machine is still being created but you created it for me and I want to be able to manage it. Can you show me how that works? Yeah, that's actually not a problem at all. One of the great benefits of VMware Infrastructure 3 is that we actually have scale-out management. It allows me actually to empower you to manage just your own environment without actually me having to worry that you can screw anything else up. So what I actually can do here is I can actually go to my web servers and I can actually add uh, permission here for you, Jeremy. Let me actually select Jeremy and I'll make you the, uh, the virtual uh, machine administrator. So now that it is set up, uh, we can actually go to your desktop environment and see how you now actually can just manage your own environment. On your desktop here, is you can actually, uh, I have an, you have an icon there, VMware Infrastructure 3 Client, so if you can click on that, uh, and you can actually log in as your own username with your own password. Okay. And what you get to see is your own virtual machines now. 
Okay, so I can see my virtual machines, but I can't actually see the physical hardware that's in the environment. So I'm assuming that you're maintaining this physical environment. So what happens if you do need to do maintenance on my physical server? That's actually not a problem. I mean, even though your virtual machine is running on my physical server, your virtual machine will not notice anything because we actually have a technology in place, something called VMware vMotion. And VMware vMotion allows me actually to move a virtual machine while it is running from one physical server to another physical server. Okay, so you're moving my virtual machine while it's running. Won't I experience any downtime? Not at all. I mean, you, I can move a virtual machine and you will not even notice it. Let me actually show you an example here. Uh, let me just find a virtual machine that I have here. Uh, let's take an example here. I have my terminal server uh, and I see uh, this terminal server is uh, 192.168.1.102. So if I can ask you to actually make a connection to this server. So if you can make a connection to the, the terminal server uh, using RDP, um, and in that screen actually that you get there, so if you can log in as administrator and uh, with password VMware, um, you actually uh, get to see some application. So you can open up your task manager, so we just see what's going on in this virtual machine. Uh, I have an application there called CPU Busy, uh, and what CPU Busy actually will do is it will stress out this virtual machine just to prove to you that I can actually move any kind of virtual machine independently of what it is doing. So even though that this virtual machine is going to completely stress out the CPU, I will still be able to move this virtual machine from one server to another server without you noticing this. And finally, but not least, I even have Tetris running here, so you can actually play a, a nice game of Tetris. Um, and what I actually will do here in my interface, I'll, I'll find the virtual machine here, there we go, the terminal server, and right now I see it is running on server ESX1. And what I can do is I can just right mouse click on it, and I can say let's migrate, and I'll let's move it to, for instance, to server 2. So I'll move it here to server 2. I'll choose to migrate, I want to keep it as the terminal server, uh, in, the in, the, in the same resource pool. And there we go, finish. Uh, and what I actually want to do is it will actually move that virtual machine from one server to another server while actually your session is running. Uh, you're playing your Tetris game, you see my task running, uh, and that machine is actually being moved right now while you're not noticing a single thing. Okay, so I can see this task is running, but do I need the exact same hardware from server 1 to server 2 to be able to do this? No, not at all actually. I mean, there is one limitation to vMotion is that you cannot move a virtual machine from an Intel processor to an AMD processor or the other way around. So you actually can only move a virtual machine from Intel to Intel or AMD to AMD. But besides that, you can take any application and actually move it from one physical server to another physical server. Okay, super. I'm, I'm still working, but the task is gone on your screen. So does this it, mean that my V moved? It actually moved. Here, if I actually go in my screen here, I'll look at the terminal server, and there you go. As you can see, it is right now actually running on server ESX2. So it actually jumped a physical server while you're still playing your game of Tetris. You didn't lose a single ping, and everything is actually just moved from one box to another box. Okay, so I can see we're running this CPU busy program and it's totally stressing out my virtual machine. So does this have a negative influence to the rest of my virtual machines? Or is there something that you can do to prevent that? Yeah, uh, actually we can. I mean, VMware Infrastructure Tria has said was designed for production server environments. And I would say that one of the most important things, if you want to run production servers, is that at least you can, can control all the resource consumption of all your virtual machines. So even though that in this example, the virtual machine is actually using 100% CPU, I can actually completely control uh, all the resource consumptions of my entire environment. So this is actually something that we can do with a concept called resource pools. With resource pools, I can really can control logically now how much resources all my virtual machines can use. So I can really make sure that all my production servers get the right amount of CPU that I want them to have, and that, for instance, my test and development servers can, act not, can actually not steal all those resources away. It also allows me to much better control the life cycle of how an application is being used in my environment. So let me actually give you an example of that. I mean, traditionally, if you had physical requirements and you required a new project, you wanted to run it like a new database server, you would try to spec out this database server for the coming three years. So you would like say, uh, how many people are going to run on this? And you have to really make sure that you're going to buy a server that will fit that model for the coming three years. Because resource pools work logically, I can just create you a database server, for instance, for a test and development phase, and then only give it certain, a certain limited amount of resources, and then later when we want to move this in production, literally by just moving the virtual machine from one resource pool to another resource pool, give it more power. Okay, so is this something you can show me? Yeah, absolutely, not a problem at all. So let me actually give you an example here. I actually have a test and development virtual machine uh, available here. So uh, this is my application uh, test and development server. So let me actually look at it. Uh, it is server 192. 
168.1.106. So if I can ask you on your computer actually to make uh, an RDP session to it. So just uh, you have a normal connection to this environment. What you actually see here is that we have normal task manager running um, and we also have a special task manager running, something called VM Perfmon. And VM Perfmon actually shows you the actual physical resources that this virtual machine is using. So if you now actually launch up your CPU busy program again, so that we're going to stress out this virtual machine and make sure it uses 100% resources, you actually will see that even though Windows is saying it is running 100% CPU, it is actually not. Because if I look at my screen here, I see that this application server is in the test and development resource pool, and the test and development resource pool is actually limited on how much power it can have. It can only have one gigahertz of processing power. So you actually see that this machine is really not getting all the power it actually wants, even though it tries to, but I have restricted it by a test and development resource pool. So I can actually now, if you want to have more power, so let's say we want to move this now into a production server environment, and I'm purposely give it more power, I can take this virtual machine here, and let me actually just literally drag and drop this here into the production server environment, and you actually see that your virtual machine suddenly now actually start running faster. Okay, so this works perfectly, but what happens if your physical environment runs out of power? I want more power, but you can't give it to me. What can you do then? Well, actually, that's not a big problem. What I actually can do is I can just add an extra server in my environment here, and it definitely does not have to be the same server, because one of the benefits of Virtual Machine Head is that it is hardware independent. So in my case here, I actually have already added a physical server here, and the only thing I have to do is actually add the server into my environment that I have here. So what I can actually do here is I go to my physical servers and I'll just add this fourth extra server here to my environment. So I can add a new host, um, esx4.demo, um, make sure I have the right permission so I can actually add it. Um, and what actually now will happen is while we're adding this server to the environment, we have a technology in place called VMware DRS, Distributed Resource Scheduling. And what VMware DRS does is it automatically load balance all my virtual machines around my available capacity using this vMotion technology. So now I have a new server, I have more capacity, automatically virtual machines will be moved away to this new server as well, so that I actually have more resources available in my environment. Okay, so I can see we have all these virtual machines running on these physical boxes, but what happens to the virtual machines if one of these physical boxes suddenly fails? So that is a really good question, and as I said before, is VMware Infrastructure 3 is designed to run production server environments. So part of VMware Infrastructure 3 is a technology called VMware AJ. VMware High Availability. And it actually can protect all my servers against certain kind of failures. Okay, so you can protect my virtual machine against physical hardware failure. Is this something we can demonstrate? <laughs> Absolutely. I love demonstrating failures, actually. So before we actually demonstrate the failure itself, uh, we first have to make sure, of course, we have to prove that actually that machine right now is functioning. So let's take this new web server that we created, and if I can ask you actually to run an active ping from your local machine to that machine, so to 192.168.1.10. Okay, so we actually have now a ping running to your server, um, so now I actually can show you how VMware HA actually works. So actually let me look up on which the, the web server actually, on which ESX server the web server is running. So I see here actually it is running on uh, server ESX3, so all for, all for me to actually demonstrate is that's actually quite easy. I can actually go to the servers here, and I can just actually power off server 3, server 1, server 2, server 3, uh, and automatically VMware HA will actually detect this failure and uh, will respond on this. Okay, so I can see my ping responses are gone now, and I'm assuming they'll be coming back fairly shortly, but this whole functionality looks a lot like Microsoft clustering services or other stuff like that. Can you explain a little bit to me what the differences are? Well, I mean, VMware HA really is designed to protect you against server failures uh, or network failures. Um, like a Microsoft clustering services or a Veritas clustering services can also actually like minimize downtime if you want to do application maintenance. So VMware HA is not the same quality uh, like a Microsoft clustering service or Veritas clustering service, and therefore we still support those kind of clustering services in our product as well. So you can actually have traditional clustered environments between two virtual machines and a virtual machine and a physical machine. But the great thing about VMware HA is, of course, is that you don't have to do anything to your applications, and it can protect any of my applications, uh, even the applications that do not have clustering services installed. Okay, so you're saying I can do this for all my applications without installing any software to the VM? You do not need anything. I mean, the web server that we're playing here right now with does not have any clustering services installed. Um, I'm not running a spare note of it. And, and there you go, as you can see right now, we're actually getting the pings back, up, uh, back again. So that machine actually repowered on on a different ESX server with literally less than a minute time. So this is really a proof of what VMware actually can do. 
I mean, with VMware Infrastructure 3, what we're really doing is we're rethinking on how you can do IT tasks better by using virtualization. So in this case here, we're rethinking on how can I make something more stable by using virtualization, and that's what VMware HA does. But we're actually doing this for a lot of other concepts as well. I mean, we can also, for instance, improve things like backup. Backup? Yeah. Can you explain a little bit what backup has to do with virtualization? So one of the features of VMware Infrastructure 3 is a technology called VMware Consolidated Backup. And VMware Consolidated Backup is an example that we re-examined on how can you do backup better by using virtualization. I mean, one of the key concepts that VMware uses in its product is having a shared file system, meaning that all my physical servers can access the same data at the same time. And what VMware Consolidated Backup allows me to do is introduce an additional server to this environment that can also access all this data and can actually copy all my data away from this extra additional box without actually having any impact on the ESX servers itself that are running actually my virtual machines. So you can make backup of my virtual machines while they're running without having any negative impact on my performance? Yeah, absolutely. At VMware Consolidated Backup, I can backup all the virtual machines None of these virtual machines need to have a backup client installed in them, and I can actually all do this while they are running, and they will not even know about this, actually. So is this something we can demonstrate? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, let me show you actually an example here. I have here a, a virtual machine that I have running, um, and this is just a, a, a example of a normal Windows environment. Um, and I can actually open up here uh, my perfmon showing you how much CPU, how much disk I.O., and how much network I.O. this virtual machine is, uh, is using. So right now, of course, it's not doing anything. Uh, in my other screen that I have here is I actually have my VMware Consolidated Backup Server. So this is this separate physical box that can access the same data that that virtual machine is using. And in here I can actually initiate a backup. So when I actually now do a backup of this virtual machine, is what you actually see is that the backup is started and that the virtual machine itself is not using any CPU, any disk I.O. or any network I.O. while I'm actually copying right now that entire virtual machine away. So you mentioned I don't need any backup software inside my virtual machine, but does this mean I don't need any backup software at all? Well, I mean, VMware Consolidated Backup is not actually a backup product itself, it is a backup enabling technology. So you actually still do need an actual backup product on the actual physical box where I'm actually accessing these files now to send those files away. So a VMware Consolidated Backup integrates with most of the common existing backup products. But yes, you do not need a backup client installed in any, all of your virtual machines anymore. Okay, so Richard, you've given me a lot of information, and I would like to review this information. Can you give me some pointers on where to go next? Yeah, absolutely, no problem. Of course, on our website, www.vmware.com, you actually find a lot of information. We have a lot of customer profiles on different industries where customers explain in how they, in their industry, actually, they use virtualization to solve their issues. Um, if you're a little bit more technically orientated, I would advise you to go to VMTN. Uh, www.vmtn.net, which is our technology network, where you can actually read up on a lot of white papers and, and data sheets about our technology. Okay, thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope you enjoy the uh, VMware Infrastructure 3 product suite.